It's been 44 years since a young woman was brutally murdered inside the Stanford Chapel. Today, the cold case investigation came to a violent end at the suspect's apartment in San Jose. KPX 5's Kit Doe is there now with new details the sheriff just announced. Kit? Yes, the deputies have taken down the outside perimeter, but they are still very much here on the property going through and taking pictures and gathering evidence at the apartment of Steve Crawford. Now, Steve Crawford himself was in bad shape. He was 72 years old, walked around with a cane, just not doing well at all. It turns out DNA retesting of old evidence rekindled this cold case, and so in recent days, detectives called him up, and so he knew that they were closing in. And so when he saw them on his doorstep this morning, that's when he pulled a gun and shot himself and committed suicide. Here is Sheriff Lori Smith to talk about some of the details of the case in a press conference just a short time ago. Crawford had been a person of interest since the beginning of the investigation. Our detectives continue to piece together additional information um, to this tragic puzzle, and we were able recently to link Crawford's DNA to the crime scene. Now, today we caught up with a retired reporter and columnist with the San Jose Mercury News. It turns out he was doing a deep dive on this very case for the past five months as part of a retirement project. He's thinking about writing a book on what is arguably the most infamous murder case in the South Bay. Scott Herhold, the famed longtime columnist for the San Jose Mercury News, has been following the Arliss Perry murder case for four decades. Herhold tracked down these photos of the security guard, Steve Crawford, from an old yearbook and also found him on Facebook. For this retired journalist, the security guard was always at the top of his list. You knew all along, you suspected all along it was the security guard. Well, that probably over dramatizes my knowledge, but he was certainly my chief suspect. Sheriff's deputies were serving a search warrant at Crawford's apartment this morning, and when they approached the door, investigators say he pulled a gun and killed himself with a single shot. It leaves a suspicion um, because if somebody is innocent, they probably want to confront the cops and have their day in court. Back in October 1974, Arliss Perry got into a fight with her new husband and came to the church at night to pray. The next day, her body was found inside the church. She was killed with a single stab to the head with an ice pick, and she was nude from the waist down and was sexually assaulted with a long candle. The way her jeans were laid out, the way the candles were used, I think none of this was an accident. I don't think it was a, a decoy movement either. I think it was somebody probably trying to make a statement. On hindsight, Crawford raised suspicions when he told police not to search the church because he had already locked up for the night. And it was Crawford who then found the body the next morning and told police it looked like a locked side door was forced open from the inside. And it was pretty clear to me that um, whoever had done this was an insider. Uh, it wasn't an outside uh, wacko. And so the victim's father died three months ago, so he did not hear today's news. But the victim's mother, she is 88 years old, still alive in North Dakota. She's a devout Christian. The Mercury News reached her today, and she said, quote, I know there is someone far greater that will punish this person. I don't have to do that. We're live in South San Jose. Kitto, KPIX 5.